Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of Tasir of Sadiq. Okay. We are in number 261. Let's begin. Bismillah rahman rahim The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is that of a grain of corn that produces seven ears, each ear bearing a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whomever He wills. And Allah is all-encompassing, all-knowing. What I like about this one is that it highlights to how many seeds there are for growth and nourishment. If you think about it, kiwi, watermelon, cantaloupe, butternut squash, even strawberries, how one seed can grow another plant which has other seeds and you have so much food around and it just goes to show you how bounty is all around us and when we see the example of manifold increase it really can inspire you because scarcity is something that is kind of contrived here for business purposes but there's no scarcity in paradise because it's an abode where there isn't going to be any suffering. And so the food example is quite accurate. This is an explanation of the multiplication of reward mentioned previously. So multiplication of reward. Who is he? that will lend to Allah a goodly loan. So he will multiply it for him manifold. That was uh, Al Baqarah 245. So we're reading 261 and it hints back to 245 as well. Here Allah says, the likeness of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah. That is, they spend it in obedience to him seeking his pleasure, the most important kind of spending is spending on jihad for his sake. Is that a grain of corn that produces seven ears, each ear bearing a hundred grains? Corn kernels are fascinating when you think about all the different stuff you can also make from corn. Corn grits, polenta, corn meal for corn bread, for tortillas. It's, it's quite astounding. What is meant by this example is to give a likeness of that multiplication so that a person may form a mental picture of it by means of which his faith will be strengthened and he will be motivated to spend in the hope of attaining that multiply reward and great blessing. So spending on things that Allah approves of something that you're going to get manifold blessings for. So make sure you spend it on causes that are real, where things are accounted for. You you know, if they end up scamming you, you're still gonna get rewarded for the intention. But there are lots of people around you who could use it as well. That is according to the giver's condition and level of sincerity and how beneficial and appropriate the spending is. Okay, so here we see, according to the giver's condition, level of sincerity. This one hits home. When you think about, is someone donating, like when Coca-Cola uses, use, I don't think they use, in some, in Mexico, Coca-Cola uses cane sugar. In other places they use corn syrup. Corn syrup is not healthy. But then you'll see sometimes these corporations will donate money to cancer research and things like that, diabetes foundations, in order to make up for what they caused. Right? You'll see this. So it's not really sincere. It's, it's performative. Think of it like a, a family who opens a foundation, but this family is pretty shady so they want to do some PR marketing in order to repair their image so they give to some charities 
A good example would be also Ronald McDonald's Playhouse. I don't know if they've changed recently, but McDonald's, they buy factory farm meat. Factory farming is inhumane. Their food is not sustainable. It's not healthy. They don't pay their workers good. It's just not a good company. And yet they will have a charity, you know, for kids' health and stuff. And their food is terrible for your health. Uh, you know, so I mean, are they sincere? So when it comes to us, we have to make sure: are we sincere in what we gave, and how beneficial and appropriate the spending is? Appropriate, right? Not just making it rain so that you can actually flex and show how much wealth you have. And it may be that Allah will multiply the reward even further for whomever he wills, giving without limit. And Allah is all-encompassing in his generosity, so he gives abundantly, and his giving does not deplete what he has. So another key point here, his giving does not deplete what he has. Allah is the creator and sustainer. So when you think of it as something that can never run out, it's quite amazing. The oceans can run out of water. We could drain them and turn it into another dry planet. We have finite resources if we misuse them. We can manage things and sustain them and you know create a good supply chain. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala operates in a system where there is no depletion, and for us humans, that's a hard thing to measure. No one who spends for his sake should think that this multiplication of reward is a kind of exaggeration, because nothing is too much for Allah, and this giving does not decrease his resources, no matter how great it is. At the same time, he is all-knowing. He knows who is deserving of that multiplied reward and who is not. So he multiplies appropriately in accordance with his perfect knowledge and wisdom. So, no decretion of resources. Even some of the most richest people in the world, they could lose their wealth. They could definitely go out of business you know their their wealth is not something automatically guaranteed we can see people like the Rothschilds the Bill and Melinda Gates and such and think or Jeff Bezos oh they'll never run out of money they got so much money they don't know what to do with they could wipe their butt with 20s and never run out eh, but if you really look at it it's still a depletion no matter what. And if you want to get even deeper, their currency, how many different currencies have existed in the world and lost value? How inflation decreases the power purchasing of the dollar, the purchasing power of the dollar? You'd be quite surprised the shenanigans wealthy people do to try to maintain their wealth because they know in the end it could really be turned to nothing. Think about it. Something very motivational. So even their hordes of wealth can decrease in value. Up and down, Bitcoin, all that. But with Allah, that's not the case. I really like the girth, the corn kernel example because when you sit back and think about starvation, you know, you think about how how many apples are on an apple tree? How many seeds come from that? And how many trees can be planted? And you wonder why people are starving. And you're like, hmm. Something's not right here. Right? Chicken gives you how many eggs? It's just fascinating. How many fish lay their eggs? How many crabs have babies? There's so much bounty. But I just poor management, poor distribution. But with Allah, you're never going to get that poor distribution. And 
he's able to expand our blessings and it doesn't deplete anything. I really like that example. Hope you did too. If you'd like to support my work, you could do so by going to my blog, which is www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.